All right, this is going to be Chapter 19, The Reproductive System, Part 1. In this section here, we're going to talk about uh, the male reproductive system, testes, cryptoorchidism, testicular cancer, testicular torsion, the reproductive tract, the accessory glands, prostatitis, semen, the penis, priapism, hormones, and the male reproductive function, and then male genitalia trauma. Introduction. Gonads. Uh, reproductive organs that produce hormones and reproductive cells or gametes. Fertilization. Uh, some terms here. Also known as conception, in which a male and a female gamete unite. All cells in the body are the meiotic descendants of a zygote. And this is a little guy that's important here. Uh, zygote is the initial cell that's formed when a new organism is produced by the means of sexual reproduction. And this is a picture of a zygote. Notice the multicellular division here. And this is going to divide until it becomes the organism uh, that you are today. Male reproductive system. Uh, male reproductive system. Uh, testes, spermatozoa, epididymis, ductus, uh, ferns, ejaculatory duct, urethra, seminal vesicles, prostate gland, bulbo urethral gland, and the scrotum. A uh, quick rundown and overview. Uh, urinary bladder are here. This was from the previous chapter. You have the testes here, uh, epididymis, and the ductus deferens, and then this is where the semen travels until it reaches the seminal vesicles, and then the urethra is a mixture of both the urinary tract and uh, seminal vesicles. Uh, we have an ejaculatory duct, bulbo urethral gland, which we'll all talk about in detail, um, scrotum sac, the penis, and the urethra, which houses both urine and reproductive sections in the male species. Uh, the testes, primary sex, or sex organs of the male system. The testes hang in the scrotum. A serous membrane lines the scrotal cavity, which reduces friction between the inner surface of the scrotum and the outer surface of the testes. Sperm is produced within the seminiferous tubules, entering the epididymis, which is the beginning of the reproductive tract. Interstitial cells produce male sex hormones and androgens. The steroid testosterone is the most important androgen that is created. Uh, spermatogenesis, series of cell divisions that ultimately produce sperm cells. Cryptoorchidism, uh, under normal development male testes descend from inside the body cavity and pass through an inguinal canal. In cryptoorchidism, one or more have not completed this process. The condition occurs in about 3% of full-term deliveries. Testes are removed generally about 10% of the time. They do make uh, testicular cancer. So we get either one or two testes that have stayed up in the abdominal organ and haven't dropped down. Now, most of the time, this will this will fix itself. They give them a little bit of while, a little bit of time. But if they stay in the abdominal area, it increases their chances of ha becoming uh, cancers. This is Figure 19.2. We just looked at 19.1 in the previous. Uh, this is 19.2, and this here is a cross section of the testes up here. Uh, in this section here is where sperm is made. And if we'll take a look in this, um, this is the seminiferous tubules here and here, um, dividing spermatocytes, spermatozoa. And these are uh, sperm, cystecular cells of the nucleus, uh, capillaries for blood supply, interstitial cells. So all spermatogonium is here. So all of these um, areas inside of uh, the testes uh, allow area and space for um, sperm to be produced. And then whenever it um, makes its way to the seminiferous, which is in the previous, when it makes its way to the seminal vesicles here, 
by way of the ductus deferens. This is where we're going to get a mixture into the urethral area for ejaculate. Clinical note on testicular cancer. Uh, relatively rare in men overall. Men that have cryptoorchidisms or one of the testes in the inguinal area are at a higher risk than those who have descended properly. Treatment is surgically chemo, surgery, chemo, and radiation. Testicles are removed and cancer is irradiated. Chemo kills the cells located outside the testes. Autologous bone marrow is a way to kind of help these patients. It is taken from the patient after chemo kills all the bone marrow. The sample is frozen and then whenever it's unfrozen, it's given back to the patient. Now the risky part of this is that the, their bone marrow retakes again and starts developing uh, their blood cells or formed elements of the blood. Uh, testicular torsion, <clears throat> major pain, a major cause of scrotal pain. Um, this can be this can cause a person to lose one of their testes. Uh, generally, they'll come in and get it seen out. Though um, hypoxia to the testicular area is very painful. Uh, the testy almost uh, always uh, ro rotates laterally or to the outside. This is your leg, another leg, so it's going to rotate <clears throat> in that direction there. Spermatogenesis, mitosis. Uh, part of the process of somatic cell division involves one division that produces two daughter cells. We're going to read through this and then I'm going to kind of explain it in the next couple slides. Uh, <clears throat> two daughter cells, each containing the same number of chromosomes as the original pair. And if you'll remember this, this is 23, mitosis 1. We're going to talk about mitosis 2 here. Um, mitosis meiosis involves, or meiosis 2, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, uh, involves two cells, two cycles of cell divisions, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, produces four cells or gametes, each containing 23 pair of chromosome gametes, described as haploid, if we'll remember haploid is half. Diploid cells have two pair of chromosomes, 46 pair. Meiosis 2 produces haploid spermatids, immature sperm. Spermiogenesis occurs within the seminiferous tubule. Each diploid spermatocyte undergoes meiosis and produces four haploid sperms. Each of these develop into a spermatozoon or mature sperm. Okay, haploid meaning half, diploid meaning both pairs, and this is right before the cellular division is going to occur. Or it's going to reproduce into another sp uh, spermatid. So up top here, sperm, spermatogenesis, or the production of new sperm. In meiosis, uh, we have diploid, which means two, two pairs. Uh, we get essentially a primary spermatocyte, which is also diploid, and this has the ability to divide. In meiosis one, DNA replication occurs, and this becomes four, four chromatids. Uh, secondary spermocytes then are created. In meiosis two, those divide again and give us four. Two, three, four. And these are half, which means they have 23 pair. Whenever it's diploid, 46, but it's fixing to divide. And then these under meiosis two spermatids or haploids um, physical maturation occurs and they turn into a spermatozoon which also is haploid or 23 pair. This is a spermatozoon. <clears throat> if we'll take a look back here near where the tail starts is where the mitochondria or the energy production is. This is the nucleus up front and then we have this flagellum which allows us to uh, allows the sperm to be mobile or or swim or move in a solution the reproductive tract testes produce spermatozoon that are not yet capable of fertilizing the o ovum uh, other portions are responsible for maturation and nourishment storage and transport of the spermatozoa so it has like any other cellular group it kind of has its uh, support sections in the testes that uh, allow us to continue nourishment and flourish the cellular environment. The epididymis. <clears throat> Functions of the epididymis include adjusting the composition of fluid from the seminiferous tubules. 
acting as a recycling center for damaged spermatozoa and storing spermatozoa, epididymis. The ductus deferens, also called the vas deferens, uh, produces a passageway for sperm from the epididymis in anticipation of ejaculation. The ductus deferens. This is what's going to actually go over to our seminal vesicles, ductus deferens, which is here. Seminal vesicles, here. Prostate gland, bubulo-urethral glands, here. And then this is the urethra, or the common, common duct, if you will. Urinary bladder, just so that you can identify location. And ureter, the ureters are coming from the kidneys. Reproductive tract, the, ure the urethra. The urethra is a path passageway that functions in both the urinary and the reproductive system. So this not only gives us passageway of urine, but it also gives us passageway in the male of semen. The accessory glands, the seminal vesicles, the prostate gland, and the bulbo-urethral glands. Seminal vesicles. Active secretory glands contribute to about 60% of the sperm volume. The secretion contains fructose, which are easily consumed by the sperm. Prostaglandulins stimulate smooth muscle contractions along the male and female reproductive tracts. Fibrinogen, which after ejaculation forms a temporary clot within the vagina. When mixed with the secretions of the seminal vesicles, inactive spermatozoa begin beating their flagella or tails, and they become highly mobile ready for ejaculation. The prostate gland, muscular rounded organ that surrounds the urethra. The prostate fluid produced by the prostate gland is slightly acidic secretion and contributes about 20 to 30 percent of the volume of the semen. Seminal plasmin, which is also in there, is an antibiotic that helps prevent urinary tract infections, all from the prostate gland. Bulbo urethral glands. These glands secrete a thick, sticky, alkaline mucus that helps neutralize urinary acids in the urethra and has lubricating properties. Without this, the urinary tract pH would probably kill the spermatozoon. Clinical note on prostatitis, which means inflammation of the prostate, can occur at any age but more often afflicts older men. Uh, they suffer from lower back pain or rectal pain, uh, painful urination, and discharge of mucus and secretions from the urethral opening. <clears throat> semen. Uh, semen, the fluid that contains sperm. Spermatozoa, haploid cell, 23, 23 pair of the male gamut. Sperm count is about 20 to 100 million is a normal sperm count. Seminal fluid, fluid component of semen is a mixture of glandular secretions with a distinctive ionic and nutrient composition. And then also semen has enzymes in it. Protease helps develop mucus secretions in the vagina. Seminal plasmin, which have prostatic antibiotics in them. Prostatic enzyme that can cause the semen to clot in the vagina, and this is fibrinogen from the previous slide. And enzymes that subsequently liquefy the clotted semen. This is going to be plasmin. This ends part one. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Name's Roy Smith, 45219-7613 or smithr.mso.net. Thank you.